In this section, we're going to call up a program and step it through. Okay, what I've done is I've changed my tool number one to the 3 ace end mill that it's calling up in the, the program I'm going to run. Okay, so for starts uh, in jog mode, I'm just going to jog over the part. Okay, step mode. Change it to one thousandths. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go to tool number one. Going to click twice on tool number one and hit zero and save. So that changed my offset. So the top of my part is Z zero. Okay, because I don't want to cut this part in the program, the end mill is going to go down 650 thousandths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move incrementally up uh, 750. So it's going to cut air above the part. So in MDI, Absolute is G90, so it moves to the absolute position. Incremental is G91. So in G91, it will move an incremental incremental amount and direction, the Atella 2, with no reference to the machine zero or the absolute zero of the part. Okay, so I'm gonna go G91, G00, Z point, seven five okay my cutter is now 750 above the part okay so now i'm going to go back into my tool i'm going to exit here go back into my tool offset double click and i'm going to reteach my zero there save this way i can walk it through and it'll cut air i can see if i have any gross mis gross errors mistakes um, and then i can just bring it down 750 and reteach it when i want to start cutting my part Okay. Program. Okay. To load the program, you have F6 load files. So I go to F6, and I'm, we're going to run the AccuPro test cut part profile, and I just hit load, and it shows the cutter path that it's going to take. And this is just profiling the outside of this sample part. Okay. So right now. What I also want to do is set my G54, okay? So what I would do normally is edge find my part. The, the, the program zero is dead center on the part. I would edge find and shift in and both my X and Y axis to get the dead center of the part. Okay, for the sake of the um, video, I'm just going to jog it. That actually looks pretty good. We're going to go with minus seven and minus three. So if I go to my tool offset page, actually first in the program, it's using a G54. Okay, so you have your work offsets. You have 54 through 59. Okay, so on 54, I'm going to set it for X minus seven inches, Y minus three inches. The Z, I'm not putting any number in all because it's using my numbers on my tool offset lengths, okay? Um, another way that your G55, G54 through G59 can be used, most parts are set up this way. You've got rough stock and like on this one, I'm profiling off about 20 thousandths off of the outside of my part. If I finish my part and then I end up holding on to finish stock on the same setup, then when I go to cut it, everything's going to be off 20 thousandths and 20 thousandths. So what I can do is in my program for the first part, I can use G54, which I'm going to do. Okay, and I'm going to come in here and minus 7.0, my Y axis, Minus 
and hit save. Okay. What I would do if I was going to, for my next program, I would use G55 and I would either indicate it in again, or if I want to be precise, I indicate it in again, find the center, and I put those numbers in for G55 and they will be shipped at over approximately 20 thousandths and 20 thousandths. Okay. So then I run my first program with G54, cuts all of that. My second program uses G55 and my home position has now been shifted. So it's centered on the finished surfaces that I just machined in G54. So that's how you use your G55 through G59. Okay, right now I'm gonna go into MDI. My program is called up. Okay, you can see the first page of the program. You can see that it's calling up tool number one, spindle speed of 2500. It's going down Z minus 635 in the program. So my 750 will definitely clear. Um, if I want to edit the program on the G2, the size of the program you could edit was really small. On the G3, you can edit a much larger program. If I want to edit it, I would go to highlight the program and I would just click edit and the edit page comes up. I can come down here and I can page down, page up. Okay, if this program was too long, then when I hit the edit button, it would just tell me uh, the program is too long, which means that you would then have to edit your program on your, your, your editing software, your CAD CAM software, and then reload it in. Okay, so this is all good. Okay, I'm going to click it again. Oh, also, anytime you edit the program, you have to reload it for any edits you make or it won't run. Okay. I go to the F2 page. Every time you run a program, first you have to hit rewind. Okay. And then you hit cycle start to start your program. Okay. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to jog things out of the way. So I have some emergency stop time. So now I'm gonna dry run my program through above the part. Hit rewind to rewind the program. I'm gonna go single block. Okay, now the single block, each time I hit the cycle start button, it goes one line of code at a time. Okay, you can start in single block, if at any point in the program you turn it off and you hit the cycle start button, you can't go back into single block. It's a one-time use only, okay? So we're gonna start with single block and rewind, and I'm gonna start stepping through the program. Okay, you can either hit the cycle start button, or you can use the cycle start button here, and feed hold here. Cycle start, feed hold, cycle start, feed hold. Um, I'm used to using this. Okay, right now it's calling up 2500. My spindle is pretty much dialed in. That's 100 thousandths above the part. Okay, all this looks good. Okay. My first block is doing a radius turn into the part. Then it's going to start doing the profile of the outer part, outer side of the part. Okay, right now that all looks good. I'm going to take the single block off and I'm just going to hit cycle start. All right. So as far as my actual cutter location and everything else, this looks good. Okay. Now a function that uh, Masso has that no other software that I'm aware of has is that as I'm cutting my part here let's say it's something's going wrong I just hit the feed hold stop apart okay at this point I can go to the jog mode I can wrap it up and wrap it over I can check out my part, see what's going on, maybe add some coolant to it. And to start my program again, I just go back into MDI and I just start hitting the cycle start button. So I hit the cycle start and it does the reverse of the two moves I just made.
and it continues on right where it left off. Okay, there, I don't have to search for a block or anything else. So this comes in handy for you know, blowing chips off your part, actually measuring a part, or stopping it before something bad happens. It's a, it's a pretty neat feature. So I would walk the program through, it all looks good. I'm definitely going to clean up all four sides so my center location is good. So if that's all good, then what I would do is wait till it gets to the end here. Or anywhere. I'm just hit feed hold. And turn my spindle off. Hit rewind to rewind the program. Okay, jog up out of the way. Okay, so now if I'm going to cut my part, I can go to MDI, and I can tell it absolute position, G90, G00. Okay, I raised it up 750, so it thinks 0 is 750 above the part. I'm just going to go Z minus. And make sure your minus goes in. 0.75. Okay, so now it's down to where the level where I actually touched off on my part. So at this point, I go back into my tooling page, double click on my tool, hit zero to zero. Okay, so right there, it changed the page. Let's go back again. Zero, so my number changed and save. So that's, just make sure that your number actually changes. Okay, so again, zero it, okay, and then save. Okay, so now the tool is set. Go back to jog. Okay, now it would be ready to run my part. I would go single block again, rewind, single block and start walking it through actually cutting the part.